All right, let's get loaded back in here to Thea the Awakening. Take a couple minutes to get reacquainted with where we left off last night. Hopefully everyone had a great day today. <sighs> All right, starting with our village. We are making an axe for the elf that we just removed from the village and put in their, our team misfits. They're going to stay close to the village though, so they'll quickly pick it up. And then we'll continue crafting all of the shields and one-handed swords for our... Um, crafters and sages and whatnot because that'll give them I believe seven magic just between these two alone plus whatever they have innately and then more of our gambling armor our big goal right now with this is either straight up damage as a bonus stat or the medic skill as a bonus stat uh, same story with these if we could get medic skill on a couple of these that would be amazing as far as our village goes, we could definitely build a better cabbage patch to get more children and humans. Our smithy could definitely use an upgrade. In fact, we should do that before we continue making all this endgame gear. The stronger the smithy, the better chances we have of not getting bad quality and the higher chance of getting a good quality uh, piece of gear. So that's kind of our goal. We have a fine herbless hut, so we don't need to change that. The Blessed Path is good. It's just one shy of giving us the Dragon Bone. That would have been amazing. Blessed Tree doesn't matter. The Palisade, we could do better. We don't really need to track Goblin anymore. Manger, we were just after the um, bonus points for our gatherers. Barracks, we're pretty good. I think we could do slightly better on it, up to a plus seven, but that's not a high priority. We have our good totem. And the watchtower is really just there to try to attract demon. Once we get a demon, we'll deconstruct it and move on to either orc or dwarf. So that's that for our village. Our misfits, which we just created, is very weak. Uh, technically, they're the new weak links, but they're your team misfits. They're gathering more dragon bone for us. And it's close enough that if trouble happens, they can run home real quick. Uh, real quick, somebody's bleeding out. Ah, our liberation. That's why they're camping, is so that they can heal those wounds. They're in no danger of dying, though. Let's see. Don't suppose you would add a child to the misfits group as insurance against shadow giants paying them a visit? Mm. <laughs> Damn it, Eventide. You really want me to sacrifice a child? I don't... Yes, maybe. Maybe. As they are right now, they are definitely not able to take on a giant, the Shadow Giants, but... Give me one more body and good gear for all of them, and I'd probably do it. It just gives the option. True. Though, if if I could select who to sacrifice, I would do that, and I would get rid of the boar. Because the boar is just a filler unit. Like, you can't put gear on him. His stats are mediocre. I mean, they're they're better than a new human, but... We can boost a new human way above that with the gear. Beasts are usually best if, when gained at the start of the game. When you get them at the end of the game like this, not so useful. Though they do, because they can't have gear on, and they have such high strength, they are amazing pack animals. Well, if no one in the Misfits group is someone you care about, that's fine. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty much the thing. Like, the only thing that I really care about in the Misfits is our medic. And she's a brand new medic, so she's got a long ways to go before she's comparable to the rest. I think they'll be fine. They're not going to be doing a lot of traveling, so the odds of them getting the Shadow Giant are very low. Let's see, they're going to heal for a turn, and our weak links are gathering Moonstone. Perfect. Actually, for one more turn, and then they'll be coming home. So let's get started. Ah, good day, a noob. How are you today? Alright, weak links are ready to come home. Let's see how much they gathered. Hundred and forty moonstone, that's not bad. They're gonna stay and our main group still bleeding out, but he's fine. We do need to camp for a couple more days, so we'll only move four at a time. Question is, what were we sending them to do? And I think the answer was Mithril. But we can check real quick in our village to make sure that that is accurate. We do need more ancient wood. We're definitely going to need more mithril. It's 3.05 and have a pretty light show going on outside via a storm. Well, I'm assuming you mean 3.05 in the morning, and if so, either you're a night owl or, good God, you need to go to bed. Though I do appreciate you coming and watching. And yes, I love thunderstorms too. Sadly, we don't get very many here. We just get the, the little drizzles almost every single day. <laughs> just see me playing Thea, all is good, yeah. I play Thea all the time. I love this game. I can't wait for Thea 2 to come out. Storm woke you? Ah, gotcha. Alright, so we are heading towards Mithril, which is over here. And it wants us to take this land bridge. So, the question becomes... Four movement and then camp. And we, <laughs> that one day of camping took us from zero wood to a shit ton of wood. You're kind of a night owl. Hey, I would be too if I didn't have college classes and work. I would totally be a stay up until four in the morning and then sleep kind of person. Even though my fiance would hate that. The whole land is shaken with tremors. Groans and thudding footsteps are heard throughout. The tremors and wild groans eventually stop, but they leave you with a sense of dread. You lose your footing and fall into a really deep ditch. Ooh. You quickly realize you are not alone and that you have fallen into a viper's nest. It could be time for us to get a Zamaze minion, if we're lucky. Let us see. Let's go none, animal kinship. How are we? We've got to have somebody good for this event to even come up. A six. Mmm. Not as good as I was hoping. It's too good to pass up. Let's try. You know a thing or two about animals, and you remember that there are ways to calm snakes and even make them do what you command. Oh, it's an intellect challenge? We got this. Flutes, or perhaps just your inner energy. Let's do it. I'm gonna auto resolve. You focus your mind nice. and remember what to do. You stand up, calm and assertive, and take out your wooden flutes. The melody you play makes the snakes still and benign. You are able to climb back up without any trouble, and you even find some granite on your way up. If you could start the first 20 turns over, would you? And if so, what would you do different? Well, obviously, yes, I would do, uh, do things differently. Uh, the, I was just thinking about this yesterday. 
Uh, let's get through this event and then I'll explain real quick. So the nice thing is we gained permanent stats, which I always love. And apparently we did not get a snake joining us. Which is very unfortunate, but our animal kinship was slow to begin with, so I wasn't... Oh, oh we did! Leave, ah! you realize one of the snakes is really responsive to your training, and you know you can train it to become your pet. Holy crap. Okay, so not as impressive since we're so late in the game, but if you can get this beast near the beginning to mid range of the game it's actually super useful yes its damage is pretty low but it comes with a decent amount of po uh, poison damage to stack on that and then it's good at other things i mean look at this it's good at speech challenges it's good at magic challenges it's got amazing folklore like this is almost three times better than my folklore in this party right now and its health is great Definitely a good find, and he will be going with the uh, Misfits very soon. Now, back to uh, Tom Don's question. If I could start over, I would totally start over. And the thing that uh, I realized I did very wrong when I started this game, uh, I didn't utilize my buildings very well, in that since the focus is to get bodies as quickly as possible so that you can do m multiple things. Um, if you build a manger and a barracks as soon as possible, all of your people, all of your children that grow up and uh, Smithy is lumped in with this, but I rarely make children a crafter. Um, if you get those built before your children even start growing up, then you get 10 additional stat points in every single child when they grow up. As long as you choose crafter, gatherer, or warrior. And I only built these within the last 50 turns. So that's what, we're roughly 20 children that grew up that missed out on 10 bonus stats. And it may not seem like much, but at the beginning of the game, 10 extra stats is the equivalent of between 5 and 10 levels that they have to gain just to make up that difference. So. That's what I would do differently, is instead of worrying about getting resources and crafting, I would pick one or two resources that I could scum craft to get extra research points from, research those, and then just rush, get the smithy, get the manger, get the barracks, and get those built. No, even if it's shitty quality, just get them built. So that the children, as they're growing up, get those bonus stats. And that would have set me in a much better place than I am now. So, that's my answer, Tomden. Like wicker and a wood to start? Those are good. The, the difference is, Tomden, um, I play with what I call a self-imposed realism challenge. And what that means is... I refuse to research any of these resources until I have physically found them on the world map to add an extra level of challenge and to me that's more realistic than the realism difficulty challenge that the game has so I can't just rush wicker and a good piece of wood that's just but that's my personal preference you guys play however you want and if you want to rush things do it by all means Whatever makes the game enjoyable for you is what you should do. Let's see. So they are not fully healed yet, but they are pretty good. I really don't want to take this snake with me the entire time though. We're going to risk it and we'll give him just a little bit of food. Can you make it to the Misfits? You can. No event. And we got lucky. No event. Welcome to your new home. We got nothing for you to do here though. Alright, as far as you guys go, we still need to spend a couple turns camping to heal. Oh, and we can gather some food while we're here. 
So let's get some nuts and some fruit. Come on. Let these guys continue heading home. You are ambushed. A group of thugs stands in your way, bearing weapons and vile grins on their unshaven faces. They look determined and unafraid. From their confident stance and sideways glances, you suspect they may have friends hiding nearby. One of them steps forwards and speaks. Your goods or your lives. We need some metals and a weapon or two. We're not too greedy. We can do this the easy way or, well, you know the rest. We're just fine with either. So unless you have no chance at a three skull challenge, whether it be a fight or a social, never give up your items. That's just dumb. Uh, let's see. Fighting is easy and our group will easily win, but you get a chance at bonus stuff when you go with a social challenge. Do I have many females in this group? One, two, three. I don't think we're, we're going to go the flirt route. We're just going to talk them out of this. We'll plead them to think of poor Granny Helena. There are those among you who know how to talk to people but you can see it isn't going to be an easy challenge. Nevertheless, your best people enter into a hot debate with the would-be attackers. Agreed, a noob. Beasts are amazing pack animals um, until you've gotten your party kind of put together and leveled up. Then the beasts kind of become your weak link because they can't have gear. But until you have a full party that's leveled, beasts are perfect for them. All right, social challenge. The only thing is, the captain's the strong one here. These things are weak. So much so that my spears will kill them easily. And then shielded unit. Let's see, we got just counter tactics. So I'll wait on that. Let's send out some poison damage. There's the captain. Again, damage is kind of meh, but lots of health. I could double poke him. That wouldn't be a bad idea. What do we got coming at him? 9, 17, 23. So we only need to do 3 damage to him to get the kill. So that's good. Let's see. She can't kill this one, so we're not going to worry about that right now. Let's get a counter tactic out. And let's wait. There we go. We can kill that one. Perfect. And then just get closer with everyone else. This fight's over. In late game, they make make for fodder to save the value. Gear. Yeah, true. Very true. You spoke of the fall of mankind, you spoke of the camaraderie of fellow beings, of the rebirth of Thea, and of common goals. The bandits were not convinced, so you spoke of sickly children, of the old Granny Helena who was on her last legs, and of the unfortunate young Henrik who fell prey to a Lyho's trick. Despite themselves, the ruffians seem moved by your plea. They not only leave you be, but also leave some supplies for poor Granny Helena. So by doing the social challenge, instead of fighting them, you're going to get some random resources. Whereas if you fought them, you would get their gear. Could be good. Usually is pretty bad. But the permanent stat increases are always my goal. Let's see, we gained another research point. We are done with resources. So let's get the rest of the cooking. Now we're done with crafting. Which means we just need two more points and we're done with research. come across a dead body lying in some sort of ditch. Hey. The corpse is literally stomped into the ground. Is it alive? Your medic realizes it is. the is still alive. You band together to try to save him, but you must all help out. Our medics are going to be amazing at this rate. All right, we got lots of strong things to send out.
Let's see. You got a really good counter tactic. Your counters aren't going to do shit. Neither's yours. Confuse ain't bad. So really, you're the only counter that's worth using. Okay. 19. Not quite a kill. Do I have a support ally? I would have to use my confuse. I think I'd rather get the kill. So guaranteed kill now. Then 11 damage. She can survive that. Or... Cyber would survive it, and then he could potentially get the kill there. And then let's send out Repiha. God, I still haven't gotten rid of that dash W. It annoys me. Let's go ahead and do that counter tactic now. Eh, it was a level 5 card. Not that impressive. Okay, let's assume that Cyber does not work out for me and he attacks to the right instead of the left. That would leave this one with 3 life. And he does 9 damage, so we'll send Martislav out to finish that if that's the case. That's fine. Don't need the ghost anyways. Uh, now, we don't know what's coming out next. We'll do our just both of them, I guess made him stronger that's a little concerning but we'll still survive no matter which one he hits eh, might as well just get closer with everyone and his first action won't work on anything Nice. Later, once they can walk again, they tell you what happened. It was terrible. Terrible, I tell you. Out of nowhere, a giant foot appeared and just walked right over me. I've seen many things in Thea, but I have not seen such a creature before. It was larger than a troll, more like a big dragon. I don't know what it was. Thank you for the rescue. So, 16 medic and 19. Woohoo! So, 38, and then our 16 on top of that is 54. Weak links are no longer so weak. They can survive a lot of crap. Yes, I will be happy and to. we got somebody joining us. It's a hunter. Yeah, I love this event when when he, uh, the person's alive. It's a great way of increasing your medic skills. Um, your traps are okay. You're just pretty much okay. You're going to go to the misfits. Oh, we finished that axe. So when the misfits return home, we'll equip the elf with it. <laughs> oh, please be alive again. Oh, uh, this is going to put us at... Uh, let's see, we were at 54. So this is going to put us at a 60 medic skill in this group if we succeed. And you know what? I'm just going to auto-resolve it because we pretty much kicked this shit's ass. You managed to stop the bleeding and patch the Nice. <laughs> Later, once they can walk again, oh. they tell you what happened. It was terrible. Terrible, I tell you. Out of nowhere, a giant foot appeared and just walked right over me. I've seen many things in Thea, but I have not seen such a creature before. It was larger than a troll, more like a big dragon. I don't know what it was. Thank you for the rescue. Yeah, no kidding. Supercharge indeed. At this point, we literally have to take more than 130% overkill damage to even worry about losing somebody. This is... This is pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, am I gonna get another one? Ooh, ooh. You are ambushed. A group of thugs stands in your way. I didn't see what those were, but I think it was an orc party. Could have been giants. Determined and unafraid. From their confident stance and sideways glances, you suspect they may have friends hiding nearby. One of them steps forwards and speaks. Your goods or your lives. We need some metals and a weapon or two. We're not too greedy. We can do this the easy way, or, well, you know the rest. We're just fine with either. Alright, once again, I'm going to plead with them for poor old Granny Helena. 
There are those among you who know how to talk to people, but you can see it isn't going to be an easy challenge. Nevertheless, your best people enter into a hot debate with the would-be attackers. And again, it's an auto resolve. You spoke of the fall of mankind, you spoke of the camaraderie of fellow beings, of the rebirth of Thea and of common goals. The bandits were not convinced, so you spoke of sickly children, of the old Granny Helena who was on her last legs, and of the unfortunate young Henrik who fell prey to a Lyho's trick. Despite themselves, the ruffians seem moved by your plea. They not only leave you be, but also leave some supplies for poor Granny Helena. And the nice thing is, the RNG chose kind of our two weakest speech speakers to get these bonuses, so they're slowly getting up to par with the rest of our group. But yeah, there is a four or five skull group right here that could be painful later, depending on who they hit. Alright, break camp with them. Let's see how they are doing. He's almost fully healed, so we're done camping. He healed the rest over time. That mithril was right there. Apparently we can't move anymore, so... Since this is useful in making magic gear, we'll collect the fish in the enchanted bone. I guess the enchanted bone would be more important than the fish. And we'll still get a bunch of both. Eh, why not? Nope, not enough to collect it. Whatever. So I got a confession to make, guys. I'm getting tired of being bent over like this, like an old man, and I'm going to form a freaking hump on my back. So I broke down this morning, and I ordered everything I need to be able to hook this mic up to a uh, mechanical arm with a shock mount so that I can sit back here and play comfortably, and you still be able to hear me. So I should be, that's supposed to be arriving tonight, probably while I'm streaming, and then I'll get that set up tomorrow, and from now on I'll be a little more comfortable, and the camera angle will be a little bit better instead of you looking at the thinness of my hair up top. All right, let's drop all of our miscellaneous stuff off, as well as the hunter that we picked up, which was her, Mardadusa. I <laughs> certainly want you to be comfortable. Well, thank you. <laughs> Revolutionary in your comfort, totally. Alright, we got a nice chunk of moonstone. Crap ton of meat. And let's drop that off too. Definitely don't need that many herbs. 35 for the sunstroke event is all you need. And now we need to resupply. So 20 of that. And at this point we should have a crap ton of bigos. Yeah, we do. So we'll just start taking that instead of veggies. 12 people, 50 days worth. Hmm. 600. And let's drop off the old stuff, the meat and the veggies. So now what do we need? We need ancient wood. We're going to get mithril right now. We're good on moonstone and diamond for the time being. Good on that. Misfits are collecting those. So yeah. I think we're good. We need to go get some ancient wood. While I'm remembering. Repia. You no longer need the dash W. And then that hunter could use some better gear. Like a hammer. And... I never picked up the, the gear for my group when they came through. Oh well. Enjoy that. Uh, 
Okay, that should be good. Now, Ancient Wood is right here. Somebody is out of food. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say what? Okay. I did not resupply them. I forgot about that. 27 days. 35. Eh, that'll do for now. I'm sure we'll pick up more food on the way. In fact, let's go ahead and collect some seaweed. This should give us a crap ton of it. Might as well get the spider silk while we're at it. Alright, and that's everyone. to put that hunter to work um, put you on the food so we get it every turn and then why not work on that break camp let's enable the seaweed we just collected oh we already did so 42 days that's better And not gonna collect clay, that's too heavy. Alright, we need to camp with them, gather the ancient wood. And then those that are left will get the obsidian. Slowly. Oh, I missed Fred. My bad. You two are just gonna sit tight. Misfits are collecting away and they are fine. And finally, we will make it and collect mithril. And we can get some food with it too, so we will not starve. Perfect. I definitely won't be using all 60 turns of wood that we have to collect mithril. We'll go until we have about 300. Which looks like we're going to get three bunches every two turns. So 15 every two turns. Roughly 20 turns worth should give us the 300. If my math is accurate, which it probably is not. We're going to risk it again because I'm tired of fighting these weak undead. Hey, no wounds this time. That works. Don't need any of the gear, though. You travel through the plains until you discover a deep rift in the ground. When you look down, you see a vast area filled with rubble. Amongst the rubble stick out some enormous ivory bones of a dragon. Take a you closer look. That the rocks move unnaturally, and you soon realize that these must be rock trolls. You can either use the element of surprise and fight them, or try to sneak past unnoticed and collect some bones. About that. About what, noob? Okay. I would always recommend doing the sneak challenge. It'll give you free dragon bones and free dragon leather. So if it's the beginning of the game, this is an amazing way to get those two end game resources. I am feeling cocky and we haven't had many challenging fights today yet, so we're gonna fight these trolls and see what happens. The 20 turns? Oh yeah, yeah. is my math wrong? Have you calculated it? Alright, this should actually should be pretty easy. It's only three enemies, so even if they are tough as hell, Somewhat correct. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, the toughest of them is confused. That's a good start. Uh, this actually has a pretty good chance of working. I'm going to take it. 
and it did. Cool. Alright, we have no spears, so we can't get ahead of this guy, but that's fine. That's fine. Darla can kill him if Darla attacks to the left. And... Can't do anything about him, but we can confuse him. Can't first action anybody, but that's alright. Dobby. If Darla kills this rocker, Dobby will kill the rock troll. Although you might find it to be 18, I think. Yeah, I figure. I was just doing very quick math in my head. Uh, do, 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 do. So these two alone will kill those two. We just need somebody to clean up this discarded. And it looks like the person who does the most damage is Blahoslav. That should be enough. Noise. Nice and easy. Defeat the trolls. You find a good deal of dragon bones, some dragon hides, and a good supply of rocks. Not really, I mean unless you're counting topaz as rocks. But that sword, not useful. The big thing, if you do a sneak challenge, these are the two things you'll get. The dragon bones and the dragon leather. Everything else came from killing the trolls. Not a bad haul. Alright. It's going to be a lot of skipping turns. I realize that. It might be a little boring for you for a minute. Ooh, we gained a level. What do we got? Misfits. The elf got more traps. That's always a good thing. Never mind. This elf had no traps to begin with. <laughs> it's a shiny stone. True. So not too useful. Our snake got stronger. <laughs> Our giant boar suddenly got a skill in magic. <laughs> okay. And then our weak links. Lots of strength. Is that on the right person? It is. So that's good. Lots of health. Beautiful. And then our main group. <laughs> oh, Darla. That was a wasted level on her. We do not need the medic skill there. But the medic skill on her is a good thing. That's 36. Where's our other medic? Were you the... No, you were the sage. Maria, you were the other medic. So we're at 40 and 18. 58. Not bad. Overall a great level. That was a lot of health gain. And then our village. Uh, a little bit of a hodgepodge, but overall not bad. It looks like both of our medics got better herbalism for that one random event. Another research point. Let's go ahead and get the archery range. One more to go and we're done researching. Footsteps are heard throughout. And after I bring this Tremors hall of mithril back, eventually stop, but they leave you with a sense of dread. I think uh, we're gonna Travel stop the beaten path through the dried up plains that remain a constant reminder of the events. Sad fate. From a distance, your scouts spot a small campfire and report that there is a lonesome old man sitting there. The scouts have confirmed that there are no other creatures to be seen, nor does the old man hold any visible weapons. In fact, they report only a small bundle and a stick. Okay, so I think since we now have the misfits along with the weak links doing our gathering, after this mithril is brought back, our main group is going to stop the gathering and just walk around killing things, doing quests, doing whatever, and getting as many of these events as possible as they're walking along. And that'll also make the turns a little bit more interesting so you're not watching me click the end turn button constantly. Let's see, old fellow sitting in his loathsome. Avoid? Now, this is an interesting quest line. We're going to approach. You approach the campfire, and the old man is just as the scouts reported. Old, ragged, 
with none else than a small bundle and a walking stick. He is, in fact, lying by the fire and clearly very weak. He looks at you, scared, and holds out his arms. Please don't hurt me. I have nothing worth your ire. You can search my luggage and you'll find naught more than some water and stale bread. If you want it, it is yours. A glance at the bundle confirms that it could hold little more. Are they all top geared? They are not. But with the mithril ring back, we should have enough resources to start gearing everyone out pretty well. Uh, and then the two of them can just gather what we need to finish it out. It's a little risky, I know, but it makes it a little more interesting, so I'll, I'll do it. Uh, you could take his stuff, not really worth it. We're going to continue the quest line. You examine the man and find no physical wounds, but it is clear he is dying, probably just from old age. The old man smiles and bows his head. Thank you. It is not often you see kindness these days. My story is nothing if not predictable. I had people. They died. I did not, and so I have been walking Thea alone, looking for ways to live. I'm too old to settle in a new place. In fact, I have sat here waiting for death to take me. So you see, you truly have nothing to take from me. But because you were kind, here, have this map. It may lead you to some treasures that are beyond my grasp. With his last words, the old man falls quiet and closes his eyes. His breath becomes shallow and you think his time has come. And let's watch him die. Among a lot of useless rubbish, you discover a few gems and a map with a location marked upon it. It's not too far from here. Okay, thank you. They're right, it's not too far. We'll worry about it later though. So, seven turns lift on our misfits. And they do have a small undead group coming at them, but it's a two skull fight. So if they did attack us, they should be fine. But now that daylight's approaching, they're very unlikely to be hit by anything. And with this, we are done researching. We don't care. This number will get to 99 probably, and it doesn't matter. Ooh, that was unexpected. Okay, so Team Misfits needs a second medic. Becoming an adult is an important rite of passage. The whole village celebrates this joyous occasion. The youngster places a food offering at the altars of their gods, in thanks and in hopes for a good future. Don't we already have somebody named Izbigniv? Anyways, uh, mediocre medic, but he does have an extra point in strength, so we can equip some stuff. That's always nice. This is misleading. These are from my buildings. So... We're going to check my groups, too, because I'm pretty sure I have somebody named after that, or I could just be remembering our last run, which is always possible. There's a spear for you. Oh yeah, we got all of our gambling shields going. What do we got? Leech, so that's good on a warrior. Divination, it's good for the magic, so that kind of complements itself. Distraction, same thing I think. I think they're both used in hexes. Traps, so that would go on a hunter. More distraction. Backstab, not too useful. Folklore, sturdiness. And perception so we didn't get lucky on the gambling yet which is unfortunate uh, though it's probably in my better interest to equip these just so that we start having magic on everyone so the question is what's gonna be more useful on him do, 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 do. let's take that off so we're not getting misleading stats a whole lot of nothing's going to be useful on him versus for all of these. So I think we're going to give him the perception one. Yeah. And then we'll give him one of the swords when they get done. Let's see, 
Lots of turns, 10 turns, and 4 turns. Oh, we need to put that medic to work until we pick him up. So, gather... help with the food. And then I wanted to check something real quick. Did we have somebody else named Izbigniew? Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, that's not confusing at all. Alright, we're going to rename him. And... We're going to go with one of my early supporters. Coach Sec. Make sure I spelled that right. G. Give you a capital. Welcome to the game, Coach Sec. Ooh. The land is shaken with tremors. Groans and thudding footsteps are heard throughout. Many people get bruised and thrown about, but the tremors eventually stop. What do we got here? An orc group. And eh, they're not really concerning unless they hit the misfits. Then that's concerning. And then down here we got unliving corpses. 11 undead. Still not really concerning. Alright, we are out of campfire wood with the misfits. Let's head home. You see fresh boar tracks. It looks like a large pack. <laughs> You're so jealous. <laughs> Tell you what, the next person that either joins us or grows up, I'll name it after somebody else. Maybe you have tied, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, this is the Misfits. Yeah, you're not chasing boars. Sorry. Uh, though I must get to bed now. Later. All right, Coach Seg, you have a good night. I hope you have a good day tomorrow, and we will catch you again tomorrow. Uh, same time as always, man. And hopefully I'll have my setup going so I can be more comfortable. Though that matters nothing to you guys, really. <laughs> uh, let's see, I was dropping everything off. Everything. 30 bones. Yeah, we need some gatherers in this group. All right, we were taking the hunter that we picked up. No, maybe. We were, we're definitely taking Kochasek, the medic. Do I want the extra hunter? It would be more gathering. We need to make more baskets. Oh yeah, that sword, was it... Leech? And will. We'll take the will one and put it on Coach Sec. I guess that's it. Baskets needed, yeah. Boars, no. Shadow Giants, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, yep, that's how I roll, Eventide. <laughs> To be fair, I would challenge the Shadow Giant with this group, knowing full well that I would get my ass kicked. Uh, so let's head back to the Dragon Bone, because we're going to need a lot more than the 30 we brought. But let's go ahead and queue up some much needed baskets for that group. Nimble Wood, Spider Silk, and that. Pop you up to the top. And let's make five of you. Get to work. They... What have they gathered? 
115, so we got a ways to go. I did not give them food. That was dumb. All right, time to do my little trick. So we're gonna send out this guy, whatever his name is. You are Vajmir. All right, Vajmir, you are going to take a supply of Bigos. Let's take 600. Also, were they out of wood too? I just totally failed on supplying them. Wood, 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 wood. Where are you? There you are. 20 wood. All right, hopefully he doesn't get an event. Sweet. Drop that off. Confirm. Confirm. Enable those. There. They're supplied. It's like it never happened. You travel oh. resources and you come Damn it. The of an <laughs> the houses are small, almost built into the hills themselves. And despite the decay brought by the darkness, many look well preserved. You realize, however, that you are not alone as two tall orcs step in front of you with their weapons drawn. Halt! One shouts at you in a deep, heavy drumming voice. <laughs> One man, do you think you can do it? <laughs> yeah, he would get his ass kicked. Alright, let's, let's... The two orcs speak to each other in a foreign tongue which sounds a lot like whistling leaves on a windy day. You make out a few words like deal, mistress, and vault, but not much else. The orcs step aside and an orcish female steps in. She is tall, muscular, and holds her head up high as she speaks to you. We got here first, humans, and from the looks of you, there is nothing you can be useful for, so beat it. <laughs> Please give me the option to be like, yes, ma'am. See ya. Peace. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he's got decent attack and quite a bit of life. Maybe he could do the fight, but I don't think so. It's going to be four or six orcs against him. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to do the fight. And his speech is only an eight, so he couldn't even do the... Ah. Uh. What can a bunch of men offer us? Oh, In thank God. The of a female, your minds are filled with naught but folly. I shall not risk my men on such dealings. Leave now or taste our blades. Interesting. I didn't even realize you have to have a female in your group for them to even do the social challenge. See, even more reason to have a good mix of male to female ratio. But yeah, we'll leave. Peace. Thanks for the experience. <laughs> oh, that could have been horrible. There was no way he would have survived that fight. That's the risk of sending someone out to do a mistake correction like that. Oh, God. We need to enable shrooms because that's their main food supply right now. And then we'll turn off the excess stuff. Weak links have six days left. Those orcs are slowly coming at our village. Or they'll chase the misfits down. One of the two. And see, the misfits now have extra people, so it's in our interest to go here. And double up on the dragon bone. So, two bunches every four turns. And they're being attacked by the undead. They should be able to handle this, but we will control it ourselves. I get to go first. Options. Hey, look, our boar has a crap ton of shielding. Why do you have so much shielding? I'm not going to complain though. Hell yeah. Makes you perfect for going out first. 
Uh, let's see. 21 is not enough to kill this thing. So let's get a little pokey poke in. Now he'll kill it and do some trample damage. Send out another shield. Immediately gets confused. Thank you for that. Fine. Counter offense. And then poke that one. Nearly a kill. We should be fine. Perfect. Don't need any of that. So the misfits are now bloodied and they are experienced in fights. They got this. Still waiting for those orcs to hit us. Ooh, ooh, queen bee, blood bees, and dragon spiders. Ooh, use the term trample damage. Are you a Magic the Gathering player? Uh, not currently, so I'm going to give my age away. Um, Magic the Gathering came out when I was in middle school, and I loved the shit out of it, but I had nobody to play with, so I would literally set up like a six-man tournament where I played all six people against myself and it was like I didn't care I just played each hand like how am I gonna beat the other people aka all versions of me and I did that for years uh, but kind of grew out of it and then later on in life I found a huge group of people who love Magic the Gathering and now I'm sitting here like I don't understand it's changed so much <laughs> So, long short of it, I'm not a Magic the Gathering player, but I'm very familiar with it. Dragon spiders are tough as shit. Let's see. These are the one beast that I would love getting in my group, because they come with a crap ton of health. And they do a significant amount of damage when you get the poison activating. Hmm. Two cards. Let's go ahead and poke that one. Still not enough to kill him. So, hammer damage. Oh, I forgot about the bees. Shiza. Luckily, she'll heal herself for a little bit of that. We definitely need to get another shield out, because I'm pretty sure there's more blood bees. I get two cards though, let's get rid of that offensive one. There's one gone. Send out a shield. No, that's fine. Get rid of her. That's okay. Uh, that means we can counter tactic that one. Sweet, no more poke. Now, this is a problem. We can confuse the last one. And then if I first action Darla, she'll kill this, which allows Juice Guy to kill that bee, and we don't have any damage coming at us. So that's the plan. That is an amazing crossbow. We will keep that. Two wounds, that's acceptable. And we got more bees coming at us. This time, just a blood bee. I think it's going to be an auto resolve. No wounds, perfect. Don't need that. We got two more turns left for our weak links. Hey, those orcs finally hit us. And it's our village. New kind of fight. Alright, you have 38 life. My poke won't even get through your shield, sadly. But let's say I did do that. That would be 11 now, 33, 35, 39, and you had 38. Perfect! That's a kill. Then we definitely need some shields out. Humanoids can have piercing attacks. Let's go with the weakest of our attack shields. 
Oh god, talk about overkill. <laughs> um, we have one offensive card left. Let's go ahead and counter it. And what the hell. Counter tactic. So, dead, dead. They don't get an attack, so this fight's already over. Super simple. Yeah, we... The odds of us getting gear now that we could actually use... Slim to none, sadly. Alright, last turn for our weak links. Break camp, head home. You are set upon by a small group of angry-looking wood elves. Hey! Their eyes are blackened from the corruption of the darkness. Oh, their different one. gaunt and dried up. Only their bows remain in perfect condition, the last remnant of their bygone heritage. One steps up and spits at you before speaking. You have entered our sacred land. Now leave us some of your equipment as tribute for your sacrilege, or die. So, this isn't the one that leads us to get an elf. I don't remember what we get for the social event, but I definitely want to find out. The elves sheathe their weapons. One of them nods at you, allowing you to speak. Come on! <laughs> oh, this is going to be easy. Elves are good at social challenges, but the fact that I outnumber them 3 to 1 makes this kind of an easy fight. Uh, I don't know if elves have natural piercing in s social challenges. I think the answer is no. But I'm going to start with a counter offense. Looks like the answer is no, which is fine by me. Let's see, if I pierce with you, that's three now. Yep, that, that guy is dead. And let's go ahead and counter. Ooh, that's a high level one. Oh, they buffed it, you bastards. Okay, together, that's going to be 15 damage. There's a kill. We can get a little more out for the hell of it. And then clean up crew. And then this guy, we're just going to make him a badass temporarily. One of the elves looks taken aback by your apology. She shakes her head and speaks. I cannot believe we have fallen so low as to rob people for merely trespassing. We do not even have a sacred place here. It was just an excuse. Let us eat together and have some of our ancient wood as an apology for our behavior. I think a power relay might have been taken out as the whole grid I live on got some kind of surge. Oh, well, welcome back, noob. Um, Hopefully you have all of your important stuff, a.k.a. your computer, hooked to a surge protector. Which I'm assuming so, because you're still here talking. But, uh, over the summer this year, well, I guess it is summer right now, but earlier in the summer, we had a rare thunderstorm here, and it hit a power line near the, the apartment complex I live in, and it was hilarious because the next day I'm driving to work, and I literally saw a dozen flat screen TVs just lined up next to the dumpster because apparently none of my neighbors are smart enough to use a surge protector on their high value electronics. So, sucks to be them. Uh, let's see, I still want to find out what happens if we're nice to them. Getting the ancient wood is good, but can we get more? The elves thank you for the food and you eat together. One of them speaks up. Thank you, friend, for you have reminded us of who we were, even if only for this fleeting moment. Here, have one of our bows as thanks. Wow, that's a damn good crossbow. Thank you. That is not as useful as it used to be. But we have people that can use it, so who's going to get what? Preferably a hammer would get the idol, like you. Oh yeah, we can upgrade him. And then the bow. Who's going to get the bow? I wish the Pinekinet could have something, but since they get absolutely nothing, they're not very useful. 
house is surge proof. <laughs> okay. Just surge proof everything. <laughs> I mean, that's the way to do it. Alright, let's put the crossbow on her. Alright, drop off all of this. We're good there. Let's keep some bigos. Which we need to start making more. Now that we're focusing on taking it with us. So. Oh, by the way, let's let's gear our people a little. Uh, Two-handed swords might be useful. The axes for the other group. Which I never picked up when I... Ah, oh, that was a fail on my part. I'll take that hammer. Uh, that's it for now. So, who's going to get what? You definitely get the sword. As well as you. Yeah, I did not gear these people out. That is my bad. You need a weapon, period. What am I doing? Uh, what is your strength? 17? Sure, let's get some more blunt damage in this group. Let's hand all that back. What do we need now? We've got a decent amount of ancient wood. We're getting mithril. Oh, uh, moonstone, maybe. Diamond would be a good option. Yeah, let's go get diamond. Which I believe was way out here. Yep. And then misfits are collecting, and our main group is as well. They have collected 165, so we're a little over halfway there. So it's just north of the place of interest. I'll try to remember that so I don't have to keep switching to resource mode. You are set upon by a small group of rugged looking dwarves. Their Man, faces lots of are bandits lately. If they cut off their beards with their axes, which they probably did, their clothes are worn and their eyes hungry. Only their weapons remain in perfect condition, the last remnant of their bygone heritage. One steps up and spits before speaking. Money, you will kick your teeth in now. So I like to point this out at least once every day that I'm playing this game. If you are following the goddess Lada, which means you've played a bit and you did the um, divine quest, Lada changes this event slightly where as long as you don't fight them and you do the social challenge, one of the dwarves will be like, I see you follow the beautiful lady Gata, uh, Gata, Lada. Prove yourself to me and I will follow her as well. And then you'll do like a, a four on three fight with the dwarves. And as long as you win, you get a dwarf. So that's the better option when you're following Lada. Uh, for the rest of us, I've never seen a dwarf try to join us from this event if we're not Lada. But I still do the social challenge in that they'll give you a small bunch of mithril, which is very good in the beginning of the game. And then if you're strong enough, you can turn around, betray them, kill them, and get a second bunch of mithril, as well as their gear. And that's usually a really good way of gearing yourself up quickly. The lead dwarf spits and grunts at you. This talking more doing, my hammy friends. I got little patience for talk. Too bad, you're going to listen to me talk. And dwarves suck at social challenges, just so you know. And it's an auto resolve for us. Your men stand firm, showing off their strength and confidence. The dwarf leader listens to you, then speaks. Today you shall eat well and sit with us by the fire, so that all of us may see tomorrow. The dwarves look relieved at their leader's words. So we got nine mithril. It's not quite enough for a single piece of armor. But we are now going to turn around and kill them. Which dwarves are better at combat. Almost 50 life, 44 damage. That's pretty tough to deal with. 
especially in the beginning of the game. Uh, I'm going to assume, based off this card, that they're all level 9, which means my counters are not going to do anything, but that's okay. We are going to poke him. See, if I poke with him, that's 11 now. It wounds him. So 11, 33. This gets doubled. So 33 and 16, 49, 53 damage, 49 life. That's a kill. So we're fine there. And then we'll send out our hammer. Oh, piercing attack. Always have to keep in mind, humanoids can have spears. So we'll confuse him. He's going to be significantly wounded, but our medic should be able to keep him alive as long as he doesn't get overkilled, which is why we confused him. And then... And that also sucks because this dwarf was level 8, so our counter offense could have worked, but... That would have been very risky of using a card to no effect if it had been level 9. Alright, let's just go ahead and poke this guy. And that guy. In fact, let's just overly poke him. I can first action somebody too, and that would help. Although, he's already guaranteed the kill, but he would be guaranteed a kill on this one as well. So yeah, let's first action this guy. Kill, kill. That's a kill on him with some trample damage. And then she'll kill. So yep, we're fine. This is enough. We'll send that one out just to be safe. have defeated the Dwarven Bandits. You realize a few of them have somehow broken their weapons in a last act of dying, but perhaps some can be salvaged. So by doing so, we got the initial 9 Mithril, and then 15. That is almost enough for a full suit of endgame, best-in-slot heavy armor from this one event. And then you get this random gear, which this club is sucks. The sword is useful at the start, not anymore. That's actually a decent sword, <laughs> the big black sword. Um, for those of you that might be interested, this is pretty much what you're going to get if you betray the, the King Arthur event and keep his sword. It's something like this, and you'll get cursed. Uh, sadly, that's not very useful anymore. So yeah, none of the gear was worth it for us, but that mithril is our main focus. And his wounds, he'll survive. At least I'm pretty sure. Our medics. Oh yeah. We're sitting at 42... 60 medic skill. He's guaranteed to survive. So we will continue running towards the diamond. How are our other groups doing? Misfits are gathering away. And our main group is at 185. Ooh, we got another fight with some unliving corpses. Easy peasy things. Alright, you have 38 life. Well, that's a kill right there. Um, we need to send a shield out because Undead can also have spears. It did not. Uh, our counter tactic will work, but for now, let's see, that's 55 damage and he has 57 life. Alright, we're going to poke him. Now she will kill it. And let's go ahead and do that counter tactic. And there's the spear. Wouldn't have been very much damage, but still very annoying. And at this point, even if this one has a spear, our orc worker can take it and then heal himself with his attack. Which it did, and he'll just heal himself. 
Now to make sure that we're safe, we're going to go ahead and confuse those guys so that even if we miscalculated here, they won't get an attack. And we'll send out the rest of our warriors. Or we could first action somebody, but it would be our Pykinette and she doesn't do enough damage to even make it worth it. And our orc is nice and healed. That's the power of leech. None of that is worth it. Thank you for the monster bones. Ooh. That looked like an orc party, so we're going to do the social challenge. Ooh, it's Strigas. I don't know how good they are at social. Let's find out. Ah, uh, mediocre. Damage isn't too concerning. Their health is decent. And they do not have natural piercing attacks. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's assume they're all level 7. Which means I have two counters that'll work. And none of my confuses will. That's fine. He's going to do 9 damage to somebody. So we'll send... Mishvako? No, I totally mispronounced that. Whatever. He goes first. He'll get most of that guy's life. Uh, and then Fred can finish him off or not. All right, now that we have two left, we're going to go ahead and get those counter tactics out now. Leaves that guy coming out. That's fine. Fred is going to die. Unless we get lucky and the Striga hits whoever we put out here. But since this is a social challenge, wounds don't carry over as long as you win. And that's the crux. You have to win. Because of her one shield, she could survive one of their hits. But I think I'd rather send somebody that's guaranteed to survive both. She kills that one. Now we need to do 13 damage to kill this one. Which none of my people are up to at the moment. He does 12. We'll support him for 2. So that's a kill there. Let's assume Fred six and him both killed this one. We need to do 13 to kill that one. Support him. And then send her out and give her the rest of the support. Okay, they split their damage. That's a little unfortunate. But oh well. We still win. And do not need the gear. Two movement left. Which the snow sucks it up all of it. Main group is now at 200 mithril. 100 more to go and we'll head back. Oh, snow is so slow movement. I wish there was like a trinket or something we could craft that would at least give us normal movement across rough terrain like snow. Is there anything worth gathering? Meat? And eh, might as well. It allows our people to finish healing. Oh yeah, we never checked to make sure somebody was crafting Bigos in our village. Let's do that now. Somebody's out of firewood. Um, production, crafting. We have one person making person person making almost three batches of bigos a turn. Do we have anyone not working? No. Who's uselessly gathering? You are, and you are. So let's switch over Vajmir and Drogo Drogo to making Bigas. Vajmir and Drogo. There. Now we make almost four every turn. Actually, that's a dumb way of doing it. I just realized that. 
cooked meals, meat, vegetable, oh, vegetables and meat, and wood. Confirm. Move you down there. And then do the same thing again. Vegetables, wood, and meat. And move you down there. So he's not quite strong enough to get it all in one go. But by doing this, we're actually making four and a half every turn instead of the three. Good suggestion for the sequel game. <laughs> Maybe. It would be awesome if one of them is like secretly lurking and watching. Picking up, taking notes, but I don't think we're that lucky. Who is out of fire? Oh, did I not supply you? What? Oh, I'm not clicked on you. Dur -dur -dur. Ah, there we go. I just didn't have it active. Alright, break camp and let's get to... Uh, it's going to take three more turns to get to the diamond. Ooh. Strigas. Striga bats. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Nine more turns for them. Fear is not an easy place to grow up in, but alas, wow. grow up we must. One They've really laxed the soft cap. And is ready to join your village and rebuild fear. Hmm. We need at least one gatherer for our misfits now. Becoming an adult is an important rite of passage. The whole village celebrates this joyous occasion. The youngster places nice. a food offering at the altars of their gods. In thanks and in hopes for a good future. So this gatherer has a really good gathering stat, really good strength stat. Uh, the crafting damage, shielding, and magic, are mi and the animal kinship are all misleading because those are actually from our buildings in the village. So these are zeros. Well, the damage isn't. The damage is going to be a seven. But you get the picture. So, but still, that's a good starting gatherer. Yeah, go, go, manger. This is why if I could do thing on my next playthrough, I'm definitely going to focus on getting those buildings up ASAP. Because these extra stats are very helpful. Ivana. You will be joining the Misfits very soon. And more of our gambling armor is starting to come through. Our main group still got a little bit of gathering to go. And our Misfits. What would be my best interest? I think... Uh, if only this moonstone was right here and I could double up on those two, that would be amazing. I think getting here is going to be the way to go for gathering. Get the diamond, the meat, and slowly get some topaz. Diamond is the focus. We'll get it every turn, which is good. Then we'll do the meat. Um, I guess you would go on the topaz and then the rest will go on the meat. We really don't need either one, but this way we're kind of maximizing both in an equal value. Yeah. Alright, Misfits will be done soon. Ooh, we got a lot of fun things coming at our weak links. Let's take on these Striga bats. Lots of life. Luckily, they don't heal as much as the Samok bats. But that life is going to be annoying. So, if I poke with you, that's going to be 14 damage now, which would be 43. This would get doubled, so 63, 67. A little bit overkill. But I like the kill. Um, Counter-wise, we have two that'll work. It's our only two counters, so yeah. 
We'll use them eventually. I can first action a single person, so we're going to save this in case the AI does some first action bullshit. So let's get our hammer out now. Good call. It'll, she'll kill this one and then trample damage that one. Uh, two cards. Might as well start with our weak pankinet. It's the safest place for her is right there. And there's the first action bullshit. Alright, now we're going to focus on getting those counters. Because I don't like first actions. Ooh, we got rid of a Striga. So no more first actions, which means... It doesn't really matter who we first action, but we might as well... I'm going to send him out and then have him poke this thing. Well, he, confu he confu could confuse that one, but it's not really worth it. Alright. Get your poke on that one, and then we'll first action him. And then these two can kill that one with their poke. And have him come out. And it looks like, yep, it's going to be a woundless fight. Just how we like them. And we got the Dexterity Horn, which is essentially two stealth. Not too amazing. Don't really care about the resources. The Spider Silk would be the nice one, though. And you. More Dragon Spiders and Blood Bees. You're going to be painful. Two hundred and fifty Mithril. Getting there. Despite the daytime, the sky is suddenly overshadowed by a Ooh. thick, dark mist that slowly engulfs everything in its way. The black mist remains a malicious reminder of the days of darkness and their everlasting hold on fear. Even the bravest of souls feels a sudden dread as the black cloud slowly seeps into every corner of their surroundings and wraps them up in a suffocating blanket of dark energy. You could swear you see twisted faces and silent screams from within the darkness. You feel a cold chill running down your spine, and dry sweat covers your trembling body. Your very soul is now infected with the cloud. So option one, huddling together and trying to find cover, is not a good option unless you're following Lada, the goddess of hope. She will give you divine protection, if I remember right, and shields you from all the bad shit. Everyone else, you're going to get cursed. And a couple people have a chance of permanently losing will. So this is a very bad option. Uh, option two, stick together but try to outrun it. Um, as long as your people have decent will stats, some of them will have the will necessary to guide your group to safety. And they will gain permanent will increases. This is a good option. Now if you have magic, option three will appear. And I don't remember what the other three options are. Uh, this one is iffy if if I have the right magic skills and I don't remember on this group So let's check uh, Medic skill is a first action when it comes to hex challenges, so we got some really nice first actions uh, He's gonna do four damage. She's gonna do two seven Nothing and she's going to do 8 damage. So we do 19 total. That might be enough to do this. And if by doing the magic one, uh, it should increase your magic skill permanently. So let's find out. You use magic to Ooh, four skull clock. That prevents the mist from touching you. It does not lessen some of the dread you feel from merely looking at the dark matter. Madly twisting and turning to try and reach you. But its effects do not reach your soul. The shield will withstand the assault, but if you want, you could push it further and try and fight the mist. The battle will be deadly, and only those who wield magic can face the mist. Yeah, I think you're right, Eventide. Uh, if we had just a little bit more magic damage, I would do the hex, and then that would increase your magic skill if you succeed. But if you do this and fail, bad things happen. 
So we're just gonna use our magic to shield us and run like hell. The shield held, and despite feeling worn out from the ordeal, everyone remained unharmed. When the sun finally returns, you are able to continue your journey. And he gave his experience. Kind of a small consolation prize for not getting anything amazing out of it. But that was the better option than anything. Once we get home and we can pick up those swords and shields we made that increase our magic, then we'll be ready to take that on. Let's see. Four more turns left for the misfits. Hey, Fisherton, welcome back. How are you today? All right, and we gained some levels. Let's take a look. Wow, our, our boar just wants to become good at magic. That's two levels in a row that he's got six cents. Uh, our medic got better. That's good. Ooh, I just remember we need to make <laughs> medic gear for Kochasek and Moimira. Doing good, just tired. I haven't been getting enough sleep. Well, I mean, as much as I appreciate you coming and watching and supporting me, get some sleep, man. Sleep is number one in everything you do. Let's see, our Zeme minion gaining more poison, so that's one to two damage. Not bad. For our weak links, our medic is just becoming amazing. And lots of strength in there. Backstab, very not useful, honestly. It's very situational. For our main group, are you our main folklorist? I don't think you are. You are not, so that was a waste for him. Uh, but health and strength, always appreciated. And our village. Tactics is our confuse in combat, so that's always lovely to see. I would rather see health than armor. They both do the same thing, but health is used in calculating your chances of dying. So the higher your health, the better your chances are. Not bad. Yeah, I will. I'm just finishing dinner. Then I got to move the clothes from the washer to the dryer. And then bedtime. Yep. Adulting. Gotta love it. Let's see, where are we on weekly? Ah, uh, two turns. I'm Slavers are a sadly common sight in hey, these another days. free child. Your scouts have spotted such a group in the area. Rescuing the slaves may be both noble and practical, but beware, if you lose, the slavers will likely not let you go free. And given their placement, we may just go hit them up when we come home with our main group. For now, though, it's time for the misfits to come home. Also, Ivana was the gatherer we got for them. 50, that's better than last time. We need more wood and resupply our bigos. And then those baskets we made, we're taking all of them. Ooh, two good quality ones. Lucky. Sadly, our boar can't equip one, neither can our Zume minion. We'll start with Ivana. You get a good quality one. Hans Gruber. You're a new face. Oh boy, a Thea stream. <laughs> yeah, I am pretty much the only person who streams it, and I only stream a couple hours a day, so it takes a lot of people by surprise. But welcome to the stream. This is one of my favorite games. Not gonna lie. Uh, who else has base gathering? Our. Oh, never mind. He has it from the basket. She technically does with a one, he does with a four, so you get the other good quality one. You have a five. Scratch that. You get a regular quality. One. Oh, it's too heavy for you. Never mind. Enjoy that good quality one. Yeah, I've been restreaming Thea myself the past couple days. What settings we on? Um, crap. Now I gotta think. Two hundred and fifteen percent difficulty, I believe. We have bloodbath turned on. Um, I hate the in-game realism. 
difficulty setting so I don't use that instead I have come up with my own version of realism I think I'm gonna take this off Ivana and put this one on so that Moimira can nope never mind I'm wrong um, so I do my own personal self-imposed version of realism and that is I will not um, research a resource until I have physically discovered it in the real world, not the real world, but in the world of the game. Only then can I research it, and that prevents me from rushing to the end game resources right off the bat and trying to create end game gear before it's even time to happen. Uh, to me, that makes more thematic sense for realism. And it also adds a whole nother level of challenge to the game and it forces me to explore way away from my village just in hopes of discovering the resources and I really like it that way. You're going to try that? Awesome. Tell me what you think of it if you ever come back. Apparently uh, noob knows you. <laughs> All right, what was I doing? Oh yes, our gatherer also needs equipment. Of course, I'll come back awesome. I always appreciate the support. I will try to make a note of finding your channel as well. What, uh, do you have a set schedule of when you stream? Hard to find English via streamers. True. Hey! Thank you for the follow, Hans. Welcome to the Liberation Army. Um, your schedule is a joke, so no. <laughs> well, I will do my best to find you, but I'm kind of limited on my free time, and I use two hours of it to stream every day, so uh, let me... Uh, you know what, um, if you could, could you private message me your, the link to your dashboard or to your page and that way I'll remember and I can give you a follow as well. You did a 12 hour graveyard shift Thea stream last night. That is awesome. I've been thinking about doing a marathon stream, uh, but I kind of have to try to balance that with work, school, all of that and get my fiance on board kind of hard to be like hey honey I'm gonna ignore you for the next uh, you know 12 to 14 hours <laughs> noob also thank you for that follow and welcome to the Liberation Army where I really do try to stay on days yeah I hear you this is kind of the only time I have to stream is late evening and once once the summer is over and full college schedule gets into play, I don't know how I'm going to manage this quite yet. Um, last spring semester, I was averaging 72 hours a week between classes and homework. So add in working a part-time job. This is going to be kind of interesting to say the least. Uh, you need to show your fiance the fat checks you get. Uh, <laughs> Fisherton, I wish I was getting a check. But sadly, that's not the case. <laughs> this is a very niche game, and I have a very small following, so the odds of me ever getting paid right now are very slim. Although if Thea 2 comes out and we can hype it up and get more people following, maybe then. Yeah, it sounds like a full schedule. Yeah, it is. But it makes me happy. I enjoy it. All right, we were trying to gear Ivana. What's a good option for her? I think we do need some magic skill in this group just in case. So I think we're going to take the good quality one-handed sword and one of our shields. 
with some divination. That's not a bad idea. That's extra magic for her. And then what do we got for our gamble armor? Ooh, good quality. But it looks like it didn't get a bonus stat. So all of that went into shielding. Still not bad. Uh, let's give the attractive armor. That'll help in a social challenge. Man, I haven't heard anything about Thea too. Um, they haven't updated recently. The last one was beginning of June, if I remember right. Um, but it does sound very interesting. I, I can't wait for the next update to come out. Um, so far, the big standout things are um, they've more fully integrated multiplayer, and it's going to be multi-village. So you're instead of focusing on a single village, you're going to have several out in the world. And I wonder if they're going to have it to where they're separate entities that you're trying to get interacting or if you control all of them and you can just kind of switch your people out between them as needed. But uh, also it looks like everything is going to be fully color based. So like this image here is going to be colored in with uh, high fidelity graphics <laughs> uh, as you see here. Which will be also be interesting if they do the same thing they did with this one where if you support them with the $5 non-existent DLC that you can buy and they give you access to all of the images in uh, high definition to use for your tabletop games, that would be amazing. I don't know, I kind of like the single village it makes it feel a lot different from other games. True. But I mean, it also thematically makes it makes more sense because, you know, following the story arc, what there is of Thea one, uh, you have successfully survived the darkness and brought about the coming of the, the Pantheon again. So mankind is starting to not only survive, but thrive. So it would make sense to have more villages appearing. Uh, damn, you like the grayscale? Ah, I hear you. I'm more interested in having a wider variety of events and monsters to fight. <laughs> and hopefully a gender symbol. True, Eventide, true. Uh, he brings that up, Hans, because there's been a few people on here where you cannot tell by the image exactly what sex the individual is. Um, I've learned by the names to tell, and we've kind of proven that by getting some of the uh, vampire events that confirmed my suspicions, but some of them are, yeah. <laughs> although they could be following the, the latest trend of, uh, political correctness and they will include, um, you know, gender neutral options. I'm thinking of a specific crafter that looks like Arnold. Mm, I don't really focus on crafters very much, so I haven't seen all of their images. Uh, an example for us would be... Lotto Slav here. This totally looks like an old woman, but it's not. It's a dude. I think you have an extra B in there, Fisherton, but LGBTQ, yeah. <laughs> and I won't fault them if they do that. I mean, uh, last year for school, my team developed a game that was focused on um, being a transsexual teenager back in the 90s and what they had to go through. It was an interesting project, and it was very different for me because, you know, I'm not part of that community. I so I had to rely a lot on going out and finding individuals that do identify with them to make sure that I wasn't one, trivializing the struggles they went through, and two, that I was telling their story in the best way that I could without being stereotypical um, or doing like a, a joking parody or anything like that. So my hat is off to any company that can successfully do that. Alright, our misfits, where are we going to send them? 
I think they brought back enough dragon bones for now. We need rubies, but those are pretty far away for them to go get. It's going to be risky. Actually, how are we on ancient wood? That's the bigger question. Oh, we're good. So yeah, let's go get rubies. Okay, bedtime. All right, Fisherton. Good night. Thanks for coming out and hanging out with us for a little bit. Hope you uh, get a good night's sleep and enjoy your day tomorrow. Come back and join us again some other time. Oh, I never fully answered your question either, Hans, um, as far as what settings we have. So I have hand limit set at 12. That's why all of my groups have 12 or less people in them. Let's see, we are messing with the undead, so we definitely want to shield out. No spears there. Let's go ahead and do some countering. So he's going to kill that one, no problem. That leaves this one. We can't confuse it, but we can do a lot of poke damage. 15, 26, 30. It's not enough to kill it. We could first action somebody, but that's not really going to help us right now. Hmm. Somebody's going to get hit for a lot of damage. His shield will absorb most of it. She's the only other shielded unit we have. Then again, he could heal most of that damage. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the Orc Worker. It'll deal 32 damage to him, and then he'll heal 19 of it back. And he does enough to kill it. So all we have to do is worry about this one. Which he could kill. So we could just first action somebody to do 10 damage now. Let's do that. And we got this. Oh, he hit the other guy. So, not very many wounds at all. Don't need any of this gear, sadly. Alright, misfits. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I make the same mistake again? No, I did resupply them. Okay, that's good. Just never activated it. Um, Slavers. Misfits are not going to be able to do that challenge. That's for damn sure. Hammer question mark? Oh, for first action? I, I thought about that, but uh, it wouldn't have got the kill on the other one, so it still would have wasted our second guy's action. I just went with the Pikinette because she would get the kill and get her safely out of the way. Let's see. How is our group doing? 305, we're done. Let's head home. Where is that slaver? You're still near here. We're going for you. We want that child. We'll hunt you guys. Do an auto resolve. Huntings are easy. Huntings. That was bad English. Don't need you. Anything worth gathering? Nope. Weak links. You have 15 turns left. Oh, we got somebody to join us. It's another medic. That's very rare to have a medic join you. Uh, you are very weak. Not very skilled at medic. Not very good at crafting, but... Oh, the game got me again. You're in the village, so all of this is from buildings. You don't have any of that. So yeah, you are very weak. We'll keep you in the village. Put you to work gathering something. 
Drogo, why don't I have you working? Are we done crafting? No. Oh. Oh, I made. I. Oh, that was so stupid. I set up the two Bigos for them to work on and never set it to infinite, so they made one batch and that was it. Another key I wish they would do is like a little repeat recipe and just create another card of it to make it quick instead of having to go like this. What monsters we bringing in? Uh, monsters we bringing in with a track beast, you mean? Because I think I have a single building set up with it, and we. I don't think we've even attracted any beasts. The two that we got are from different events. All right, we're setting that to unlimited, Vajmir. What uh, what attraction we have period? Ah, gotcha. So right now we have attract demon and attract human. Um, I am really wanting to get the attract demon because that's one of the few achievements we have left to do. And once that happens, I'll just deconstruct that building and then try to get dwarves. The elves we get plenty of from random events. So I haven't really been focusing on attracting them. Alright, let's get this last batch of Bigos set up. Infinite and Drogo. Now, gathering. Where is that new medic? Help out with the veggies. I don't suppose I have an extra basket laying around. I do not. Did we get lucky? Did we get a medic? We did not. I would think Muha would try to get player feedback from their first game to help with the second game. And you know, they could be. Um, and it would be smart of them to. It's just a question of where they're getting that feedback. Technically, they would still be considered an indie company, so there is a good chance that they're doing like alpha tests on um, some of the indie game sites that operate just like Steam, but only for indie games. And it's guaranteed that they're at least doing uh, in-house testing. All right, we're going to hunt these bees. Don't have to worry about pierce damage with that and the slavers will probably come to us you approach the slavers yep. and see they are a mixed group of different peoples including orcs humans goblins and even dwarves they drag behind them would be nice if they had a forum online slaves, true children shackled and cruelly whipped by their captors the slavers are well armed but they have clearly seen some fighting not long ago as they have bandages and look banged up all right so for the new people joining us of these options attack is pretty straightforward you fight them you kill them you get their gear and you will always get a child from this event ambush works the same way but it's a tactical challenge now if you go the social route somebody will permanently gain will which makes them better at future social challenges uh and the uh, Slavers will offer you half of the slaves, which again, just gives you a single child. Um, additionally, after you do the social event and get that permanent stat increase, you can then betray them, kill them, take all of the slaves, and still get a single child. So the route I like to take is get all the permanent stats I can, and then kill them because they're slavers. It's a principal thing. In fact, I could have just auto-resolved this because the slavers are weak at social challenges. We're going to kill her with a poke. And we are badasses at social challenges thanks to this shade. The wolves are just there to block your best attacks. Um, let's go ahead and do some countering. Counter offense. 
Counter tic tac. Kind of tic tac. Okay. So we she's gonna kill the wolf. This one doesn't get an attack. Five damage coming at us, but we'll confuse her, so that's that. We need to do seven damage to kill this one. He handles that. Five damage to kill her, he handles that, and then clean up crew. Once you finish the social challenge, you can sometimes get an adult person. It's rare though. Very rare. and clear confidence made these slavers very uneasy. They must have had quite a fight beforehand, as you realize they would not have been an easy prey still. Their leader speaks. Fine, you can have half of our cargo and just leave us be. You feel this is a final offer. And now we kill them. Alright, humanoids can have spears. Gotta be worried about that. So we will start with our weakest attack, shield unit. That's why we want the shields. Um, our counter, the counter one is not going to work, period. The counter two might work on a wolf. Yes. And then let's go ahead and kill this guy. No, no. Let's think this through. Let's send out a hammer. Okay, let's counter tactic the remaining two. Get them out of our hair. We can confuse that guy. We're going to poke the final guy. Poke again. And we can first action her to get this kill. That works. So she kills, he kills, he kills, kills, he kills one of those. These two finish the cleanup and we're done. slavers. Some slaves died during the skirmish, but some remain alive and rejoice at your heroism. None of the gear is really worth it. You gather up those who can still walk and make a quick burial for those who did not make it. And we got our child. So, thank you for the kid. Now let's head home. Apparently we're going to take the northern route. Weak links have 13 turns to go. These guys, we are slowly making our way to the ruby. Nothing worth gathering. They can't move anymore, apparently. You approach the slavers. Oh. So they are a mixed group of different peoples, including orcs, humans, goblins, and even dwarves. They drag behind them a row of malnourished, worn-out slaves. Actually, children, shackled and cruelly whipped by their captors. The slavers are well We're good at speech challenges. The only one who can't do a damn thing is our boar. They have bandages and look banged up. And he has a single life. <laughs> yeah, let's do the same thing. Social challenge. Uh, this time I will control it again because we're not as good with this group. Our MVP of our Lada playthrough, the Zeme minion. Is actually pretty good at social challenges with his piercing attack. And then let's send out the elf. Of course, the wolves come calling. This is only going to work if it's another wolf, which I doubt. So that's just a waste of a turn. Let's do some counter tactics. Oh, it was a wolf, but it was level 3, so it would have been a waste anyways. Alright, so we only have him doing damage this turn and he's dead. She kills the wolf. We need somebody to kill that thing. And then get closer with these two and our boar will just sit there looking pretty. Nice and easy. Posturing and clear confidence made these slavers very uneasy. They must have had quite a fight beforehand, as you realize they would not have been an easy prey still. Their leader speaks. Fine, you can have half of our cargo and just leave us be. You feel this is a final offer. And in this situation, we're going to take the deal because our misfits aren't strong enough to do this fight. 
The slavers cut off their long chain in the middle of the row of slaves and leave with half of the cargo. You hear some slaves crying out, but most of them are too worn out to protest. You realize many of the rescued people will not survive the night, and yet you have given hope and a new start to some. Free child. What do we got here? Ooh, this is going to be painful. Our weak links are taking on some of the best when it comes to arachnids and bees. All right. There's dragon spider number one. If I poke with you, that's 11, 33, 36. Not enough to kill. And then you would be 49, 53. Still not enough to kill. What if I poked with you first? So 4, 13, 15. Seventeen, twenty-eight, thirty, fifty, fifty-six. That is exactly enough to kill if I poke with her first. Let's go for it. And the reason that was different is calculating the doubled poison damage. If we did her first, the the poison wouldn't activate, but by doing her first and then her, both of them will. So we get an extra three points out of it. Okay, so that one's dead. This one doesn't get an attack, which is fine. That's good, it's helpful. Let's counter offense, because the rest are bees. And I hate bees. Counter tactic. There's all of them. Now, did those monsters just spontaneously show up like an event, or did they come from some lair nearby? Uh, there is a lair nearby, but since it's nighttime, you can't see them. You can only see your own hex unless you're playing as Horus, then you have night vision. So you never know when things are coming at you when it's night. Okay, we only have to worry about this one's damage, which we can confuse it. So this one dies. Now we need to take care of these. Let us start with... Well, our hammer is going to kill both of them without any assistance. So we'll do the hammer first, and then we need to do 52 damage to kill this one. Our orc can handle that. And we'll go like so. That should be good enough. <laughs> Hashtag praise Horus. No monster shows up spontaneously. They all come from there. Yeah, very true, very true. Well, I would say with the exception of this shadow giant, that's technically a monster that shows up randomly and either you sacrifice someone or you fight them. So if you see a giant running around, you get a giant lair on your map. True. Very true. Hans knows what he's talking about. I'm also assuming you're a he when I said that because of the name Hans. I apologize if you identify differently. True, that is an event, not a spawn. Uh, decent materials and gold. Nah, whatever. I'm a large hairy dude, you are correct. <laughs> uh, thank you for that image. Uh, let's see, what are we doing? We are heading home. And it is my time now, so let's quickly get this going before the missus gets angry. She doesn't get to spend a lot of time with me since I work, go to school, and stream. And I shouldn't blame it on her, that's, that's mean of me. She deserves my time just like you guys. Ooh! This is going to be difficult because this is our uh, misfits group and it's not a full party. We might be running. Uh, 
Alright. 28 life. You are going to be useful in your counters. It would be a waste, though, to use him, her to poke. Craftsmen and sages don't do anything, so there's three dudes you don't need to worry about. True. What I'm worried about is the goblin boss. So I'm going to save my piercing attack for said boss. I can first action my hammer. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I'll save that for the end. Which means let's get some poke now. There was a gobble boss roughed into. Yeah, there's a goblin boss. Um, and we have to worry about piercing attacks still. Luckily, we have an amazing shield here. And they both had piercing attacks. Thank God she had an amazing shield. Um. Do, do, do. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Options. So when I first action my hammer, it'll kill this guy and her. This one will still get an attack off. Which will either wound her or... Her shield will absorb it, so we're good there. I could just shield her for more, but now I get a single card. Let's assume they have more spears coming, so we'll send him. Oh, fuck. Well, I'm going to first action him now. Now we have to worry about the AI catching up and doing its own first actions. Attempt to... Nope. They're all high level. Crap. Uh, Zeme Minion, do your thing. And then we're gonna shield said Zeme Minion. Come on, I know you have a goblin boss. There it is. I can almost kill it with the poke too. Okay, good, good, good. Keep hitting those shields. Thank you. Wow, we're not going to take any wounds. I approve of this. Okay, so ultimately we did get lucky there. All of the attacks went in our favor, where they hit our shielded units perfectly so that none of the damage came through. Uh, we'll keep that brooch. That's a pretty good brooch right there. Because gathering is always nice. Stealth is situationally useful. And then... This is uh, Hex Challenge Poison Damage, and this is Physical Challenge Leech Damage. Both can be useful. Alright, and then I am going to end the game after I get these orders going. So, let's put the brooch on her, since she has high magic to be... No, no, not her. Who would it... Ivana had the magic, sorry. I'm going to put that on Ivana to really maximize her magic. We are almost there. Our main group is still heading home. Gonna take a few more turns. Uh, hmm. I don't, we're still not good at magic challenges, but we are pretty good at stealth challenges now, I think. Maybe. Three, two, four, not looking good. Eight, sixteen, and one. Never mind, we have one really good person at stealth. Alright, uh, we're just gonna fight. Okay, let's get the poke on. Nearly kills him. And then we do need shielded units. We have almost no shields though. Okay, 
Let's see. Let's go ahead and confuse that one. And then counter tactic. Confuse the first one just to be safe. Let's poke that guy. And then confuse that guy and hammer shade badass Darla. Nice. Decent axe for the beginning of the game. Not really useful anymore. Fast reaction gives you piercing in, um, what was it? Physical and sickness. Actually, we might keep that. I'm sure one of my warriors still has an empty slot. And then getting piercing on them would be super helpful for physical challenges. As you look Damn it. <laughs> and admire the world, you see something of interest in the distance. What is it? You spot the outlines of a tall tower on the horizon. Who knows what it may hold? Cool beans. We'll check it out later. You see the skies dark <laughs> and the air getting heavy. The wind picks up and thunder strikes. Strangely, this seems to happen only around you as you see clear skies up ahead. All right. Let's uh, use our folklore knowledge to see what's going on. You realize very quickly that you must have stumbled upon a territory claimed by the wind demons, the Vili. Known for their territorial instincts, the Vili do not like intruders and rarely take time to discuss the matter. Indeed, you now see several winged creatures circling you among the dark clouds. So you could do the fight, you'll get some random gear and resources, and the experience from it. Or you could do the social challenge, which will make you better at social. Or you can do the magic challenge. Three school is going to be a little challenging for us, but we should be fine. And this will improve our magic skill, and we'll get some random stones out of it. You know the right ritual to banish such demons, so you can try to perform it quickly. And if we're lucky, it'll be a moonstone. Begin challenge. Uh, unfortunately, all of our damaging cards are in our tactical hand. So, counter offense. I only have a decent counter tactic. I doubt this will work. Yeah, it didn't work. That's okay. Let's just let the rest of the cards come out. So we have 10 damage coming at us. Well, meat shield. And then second meat shield. And then our two damager. Yeah, she'll absorb both of those attacks, so we're fine there. Let's get closer with him and our shade. Actually, we can confuse that one. There we go. That's a good start. Okay, do we have a counter tactic? That's not going to work. Can we confuse that one? We cannot. So let's let both come out and then plan accordingly. So, she'll be able to survive all the attacks. She'll kill first this one and then damage that one. We only need to do four to finish it off. So he'll finish it off on the second turn. And throw those out for the hell of it. The ritual worked and the V shrieked nice. pain and run away from you. One of them is struck by the magic so badly that she turns into a pile of precious stones that fall beneath your feet. So we got some moonstone. Two of our people got better at magic challenges. Uh, and it was our <laughs> two of our best people. So the strong become stronger, which is fine. These two got temporarily better at magic. But that was a good find. So I think that is everyone used up. Good. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out and watching me play Thea the Awakening by Muha Games. It's one of my favorites, as I say every time. I especially appreciate the two new people that followed us today, Hans and Noob. I uh, appreciate it if you come out and check us out again sometime. I'm Demordred. I stream every day starting at 7 p.m. Pacific. 
Um, I am willing to chat about any and everything, especially game design, since it's what I study. Uh, so until next time, game on, friends, and have a good night.